Oh, hallelujah. I would like to ask the rest of their family if they would come. Hallelujah. Thank God for babies in church. And uh, when you heard me say the rest of their family, we who are ministers, um, the only family we have. Oh, there's the rest of the other family. I forgot they're coming too. Hi, man. And uh, Tia's family is in Ohio. And uh, standing in for them will be Jay and Summer. Did you leave somebody take their babies? Yeah, they're going to come up without their babies. Uh, Luke and Tia and Jay and Summer have built a loving relationship. And Acts chapter 2, verse 39 says, This promise is for you and your children and for all who are afar off. Who's up? Hello. Okay, good, good, good. So you can hear us and now we can hear you. Good. We can hear you just fine. Yeah, glad you guys are here. Bless you. Uh, Pastor Day. God has blessed our church family, but specifically uh, Pastor Pat and I, with Luke and Tia here. We prayed them, sorry Matt, we prayed them to Texas because we needed some family close by. And we are so glad that they are here with us. They are a gift from God. But they're not, they, they not only faithfully serve at our church, they are our family. More importantly, the primary responsibility of Luke and Tia is the love and care for each other and for their two sons. I remember when we were there, yeah. two sons. <laughs> they come in dedication together as husband and wife, as mother and father of two precious children, but today we're talking about Eli, their youngest. If you, as a congregation, do not assist them in the care of Eli, they will be ill-equipped to assist the body of Christ as God intends. It's really hard to pastor when sometimes you're overwhelmed with the responsibilities at home. And so they really need your help. This act of dedication does not automatically make Eli a Christian, but it is a beginning. It's a point of beginning for Luke and Tia committing Eli to God. And they enter into a partnership, not only with each other and with us as their family, but with us as a congregation. Jesus said, if anyone causes one of these little ones who believes in me to sin, it would be better to have a, it'd be better for him to have a large millstone hung around his neck and to be drowned in the depths of the sea. That's Matthew 18, verse 6. If you're willing to help as part of their spiritual family, please stand and pledge the following with me. If you would stand, please. As brothers and sisters in Christ, we pledge to be faithful in returning ministry to Luke and Tia as our shepherds. We will teach and serve their sons in the programs of this assembly, including, but not limited to, nursery, Sunday School 2.0, High Point, and Oxygen Youth Ministry. If you will do so, would you say, with God's help, we will? With God's help, we will. Amen. And will you... While Eli is an infant, be extra sensitive to their personal needs, offering assistance with home and auto maintenance. If so, will you say, I will? Now, wait a minute. <laughs> I want to hear about three or four men's voices. Ask that question again. Don't say this if you can't help them with home and auto maintenance. Try this again. Because my son is worse. Son, yes. He's worse at auto mechanics than I am. Okay. Ask it again. Okay. Will you, while Eli is an infant, be extra sensitive to their personal needs, offering assistance with home and auto maintenance. If so, say, I will. I will. I will. All right. <laughs> See that hand there in the back? Good. All right. Will you, realize the, will you as a congregation, realizing the added pressure pastoral responsibility brings to the home, offer your services for occasional free child care? If so, say, I will. I will. And as you say that, realize that with this one comes this one. Okay. <laughs> Uh, the congregation may be seated. And now it's my turn to address the family. <clears throat> but since Diane, other than me, is the only physically present biological family, I speak to you, Nana. You've never shrinked from your responsibilities of our, to our sons. You've maintained a home, a full-time job and you have ministered in every stage of our children's lives, from following them in junior Bible, uh, 
quiz, yeah, and uh, all the way up to being their youth pastor, and now you are a doting grandmother. Your ministry to our sons is beyond compare, uh, but perhaps your crowning achievement in ministry to them is not that you are a doting grandmother, but that you are that one's loving and supportive grand, uh, mother-in-law. And I wish I could tell you she is the best mother-in-law I know, but mine is still alive. <laughs> and she is the best mother-in-law I know. I'll give my mother that. <laughs> I know it goes without saying, honey, but I have to ask. Will you do your part to show Eli who Jesus is as often as you can? If so, please say, I will. I will. So I have to ask you, will you? <laughs> I will. In the sight of God and under the witnesses of our church, do you, Luke and Tia, promise to teach Eli the Christian faith? And you promise early to seek to lead him to accept Jesus Christ as his own personal Lord and Savior? Do you promise to live godly and consistent Christian lives before him? And as God's minister, I take your child. <laughs> I take your child, Elijah David, from you as a symbol of you giving him to God. Luke and Tia, I have watched your lives as parents to Leo. And so I know that you are very well equipped to raise this child to serve the Lord. And I've already instructed him earlier this morning that he's expected to get saved and baptized in water with the Holy Spirit at a very young age. And he understood. <laughs> but I have watched your lives, and I, I couldn't ask for better parents for my grandkids. Because <laughs> you know that's important to me. And I just commend you, and I thank you for what a good job that you're doing. And because she's cracking up, it's now my turn. <laughs> you know... My tradition is to give you a gift at baby dedication time, and here is my gift to you. struggle so hard to see breathing labored and shallow we prayed so for mercy when all of a sudden I am aware my fears are eclipsed by God's glory and I realize just how beautiful you are and how great healing can be oh how he loves us so oh how he loves us how he loves us so Lord you created Eli's entire being you knit him together in Tia's womb I praise you because Eli is fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Eli's frame was not hidden from you when you made him in the secret place, when he was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw his unformed body. All the days ordained for him were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of Eli. And oh, how he loves us so. us, how he loves us so, and oh, how he loves us so, 
true that I realize he belongs to God first. He's not ours for keeping. But as long as we can, his sweet face we will kiss and rejoice as we watch his lungs work in his chest. We don't have time to worry and fret when we think about the way that he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Yeah, he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. supposed to be. And God, you did this thing that Pastor Pierre preached about in this one. And in Haley, we've seen you do these kind of miracles. We know you are still here doing this. So more than his life, Lord, we thank you for his healing. And we thank you, God, that you are going to continue to care for him and show yourself marvelous in every one of us. I pray, Lord, on this Mother's Day that this memory that has been established in our family and in our church family will carry us with a greater sense and understanding of the love of Father God to us as your children. I pray in the name of Jesus to conclude the service. Would you sing with me? Praise God from whom all blessings